What's up, guys? Jay Daniel here with Mr. Vic, and this is the Sales at Home podcast. Um, so, dude, uh, what we were just just talking about, actually, uh, I guess, kick it off. Yeah. So, I I've been seeing this this trend in recruiting lately about you know salespeople saying, "Oh, this offer just isn't for me. Like, we're not a good fit." And I understand that to a degree. I understand you know, like a job not being something that fits with you or that works with, you know, who you are and what you do. But like, if you've never had a job and you are looking hard for work, you've been looking for a while and a recruiter offers you a position, knowing who you are, knowing about you, and they set you up and saying, this is a good spot for you to learn and grow. And you're like, oh, this doesn't have everything I need. Like it, to me, it, it there's a, there's a lack of understanding because you'll be in a, you'll be in a, a sales program or like a sales training program or some type of mastermind or something. And they'll take all this information in and they think automatically because they took the information in that their output is going to be worth that information. Right. So, you, know, you know what we saw it a lot? We saw it a lot with, with sales mentor. Uh-huh. Like people would take the program in and, and say what you want about it. But that $97 program was solid. Right. It was a solid little program taught you, you know, the basic stuff that you needed here and there. It, it left some stuff out, but it, it taught you enough to, to be productive. Right. So, yeah, you get a skill set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you bring it in and you take all that in and then you just expect to be that skill set. But you have yet proven you've, you've yet to try that skill set out. You've yet to prove it out. So you're waiting for this position. Bro, bro, bro. You know what it's like? You know what it's like? Yeah. Like, um, so Michael Jordan has little, like, like tutorial videos on YouTube, right? <laughs> I know exactly like, what you want this. Yeah. You, just, you just watch Michael Jordan teach you how to do, a, uh, not even a jab step, just you watched him how to, how to do a left hand layup, right hand layup, how to dribble in place, and, uh, you know, how to rebound. Mm-hmm. And now your, your market value is as high as Michael Jordan. You won't yeah. play for the G League. You won't yeah. play for the neighborhood team. You'll only play in the NBA and only on specific teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 unrealistic. You got to. Someone offers you a a role on a team, a spot on the team. You're like, no, this is beneath me. I'm waiting for, to get on the the Warriors, or I'm waiting to get on the Bulls. And it's like, come on, man. Like, you need ex- you, you need to get experience. You do. Um, it's it's like you just have you know how you've been studying the art of pushups, mm-hmm. but like your your string bean, right? Like you gotta you gotta do them, and then now every time you learn is a feedback loop. Um, right. And you just, and you I think, faster. Mm-hmm. let me, let me say this though. The only time where I would say that experience is, is not necessarily needed is when you can go out and create that opportunity for yourself through networking. If you can go out meet that business owner, connect with that business owner by yourself, prove to them that you're worth some time and effort, get them curious about you, you know, mm-hmm. get them to like, kind of like fall in love with who you are and then offer you a position. That's the only time experience is negated because you've proven to them that you can do the job and they've actually, they like you who, for who you are, not for your skill set, and they can but teach it, you a skill set. Right. But, and it's true. They can teach you the skill set. That That's actually really true. But um, I mean, how easy is it to get in because they like you and then lose it right away? Cause you, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't close yeah, the door. True. I, I think, um, your your competence is only going to go up, especially if you don't have even like a lot of like, because because sales is having conversations frequently with people, you know, so if you've been in business for a while, if you've been around people for a while, mm-hmm. like you're going to catch on quicker than somebody who's like, never really talked to people, um, or you know what I mean, or somebody younger. Um, but I think that those factors do come into play. But I mean, like, you know, you, you kind of need, I, I think the you need, you need experience, you know, yeah. like it's, it's like, it's like the hype beast, you know, it's like yeah. the, the, the six figures, 10 K a month, the, you know, that inbound leads, like not having to set, like, that's a hype beast, right? Like that's the, yeah. That's the oh yeah. Like everybody wants this. This is what I'm going for. This is, this is what I need. Right. And that decision-making process for a lot of people is, is very, very flawed. Because they'll think, oh, yeah, I want the hype, right? I want what everybody's going after, and I deserve that. But you're missing out on some opportunities that could get you there a lot quicker 
than you waiting for a petition to come and like to fall into your lap. Cause it's like, you're, you're going after the hype. You're going after the big thing that everybody's talking about, but you're forgetting the fact that you're not ready. You are not that guy. You're not him, you know? So, <laughs> so because of that, you know, you got to start small and not small. Like, you know, you don't have to get a crap gig, but if a position's got process in place, they've got training, they've got leads that are sitting there waiting for you to talk to, you know, they've got a, a business owner who's passionate about their project and have put forth, you know, they've produced on their own and they're just looking for someone to come alongside them and, and, and grind, like grind. Yeah. Dude, dude, if somebody's willing to book, even in general, right? If somebody's willing to book inbound calls in your calendar for you, they're putting a lot of money into each of those calls. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, like that's a good position for anybody who's just getting started. Yeah. Right. Cause that, because one thing is organic and, and that, that's one thing I say to watch out for, watch out for an offer where like all they have for you to do is call no shows or something or call like old leads. But like, yeah. if you're getting inbound opportunity and you've never like, you know what I mean? If you're getting inbound opportunity, it's a really good place to be. Like, yeah. I would even say if you're getting, if you're getting warmish leads coming in, people actively talking to you about your business. Right. Like if, if you put out an ad and people are actually like coming to you and, and replying and it's, it's constant or you throw out an email blast and more than 2% of people are responding. Like mm -hmm. dude, that, that says something about that owner that says something about that business. And it's like, you have to make the decision. You've got to know. All right. Maybe this might not have everything that I want. Right. Maybe this might not have mm -hmm. all of my, my, you know, my wish list. But my must haves are there, you know, like it's got leads. It's got, you know, an owner who cares. It's got like, you know, structure. It's got a good pay system. Like people, people are making decisions based on their future selves and they've yet to become that future self. Yeah. I think you gotta, you gotta know the difference between doing things from the perspective of the professional and being the professional you know what i mean um because yeah. it, it's of course cool, it's to find distinction and i think like that's what we do on sales calls right mm -hmm. we challenge somebody to start thinking like the version they want to be right what decisions would they make but that's if they were in your shoes mm -hmm. <laughs> you know if, if mm -hmm. like you know so it's like what decision would the future version of you make but if they were in your shoes right now mm -hmm. you know you don't got two fucking dimes or to rub together or whatever the yeah. same like yeah for sure you know, I think it's it's funny because it's like we don't operate this way in anything else in life, right? We don't say, oh, I want to become a general and then just go into the Navy as a general. You don't? No, you don't do that. You don't just say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be the best basketball player ever and then walk on a basketball court and think you're the best basketball player ever. Like, mm -hmm. you don't just do that. You work for everything else in your life. You start at the bottom for everything else. And sales is unique in where you don't necessarily have to start at the bottom but you've got to start somewhere and it's not the top. So, you know what? Basketball is a really good analogy for that because there's so many different skill levels within it. Like there's like the kids league, the men's league, the local park, and then you have like the semi pros and then you have like the, the pro eight. Like then you, there's just, when you walk into a room, you know, if you can compete, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like, you have the kid, you know, who, who, like you just, you know, the room that you can't compete in. Mm -hmm. and I think that self-awareness is important because some people, even if they haven't done sales, they know they can compete in the room, you yeah. know, for whatever reason, like, yeah. you know? Yeah. And some of that's bravado. Some of that's hubris maybe. Yeah. But at the same time, like I know that I'm not walking into an NBA tryout thinking that I'm going to kill everybody. Yeah. You know? Like I have enough self-awareness and enough like confidence in myself to like, yeah, I could go on a, on a court at the park, you know, or at some gym somewhere and, and do decent, hold my own, but I'm not going to go to the NBA. I'm not going to go to like the, even the G league and, and kill it. Like that, the skill level is far above where I'm at. And, okay. and I think that's a, that's mm -hmm. the thing too, is realizing that these pros, these people who are selling and, and making 200 plus thousand dollars a month, or, you know what I mean? Like they're, who are doing all of this, their skill level is so far above you. It's like, it's like 
even people that when you're starting out and you have no idea what you're doing, that person making $40,000 a month is so far above you that like it's, it's, it's unfathomable how far above you they are and how much they had to grow. It's like that, you know, when Brian Scalabrini, when that guy, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he played, yeah. When that guy was like, Oh, I you guys one on one. Yeah. I could whoop you. He's like, listen, I'm the worst person in the NBA and I'm still beat you with my eyes closed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it's there's a there's a there's levels to it, you know, and the decision making process along those levels will help you level up. But when you come into it and you're just like, oh, no, this isn't good for me because this doesn't have everything that I need and I'm not going to settle for something. You're foolish if you're scrounging for money. If you've got all the time in the world and you've got all the time to learn and grow and develop on your own without having a job. Sure go at it right it's i still think it's a waste of time but go at it but if you're if you're coming in and you're trying to rub two nickels together what do you think of people that are like just getting started what do you think of people under those those circumstances when um i, I don't even know how to say it like in terms i guess awareness like, because you, you really don't know until you start, yeah. you know? Yeah. I don't know. I can't find I, the question. One of the hacks to that, I would say, is to find a mentor. It may not necessarily be someone that you pay for mentorship. Could be another closer or another salesperson that you kind of look up to that kind of tucks you under their wing. But find someone to vouch for you, you know, who gets to know you on that level and vouch for you. And that's why... It's so important to like talk to other people and communicate and, you know, meet people and, and to network in that way, find someone to vouch for you and let them refer you somewhere. And then you're resting on their laurels for a bit and you can come in and, and take that ramp up period and allow that, that natural ramp up period to take place. And you dive yourself into the offer and, and do you the know best what it, you can. You know what it does too, when you like, when somebody that you like, know, like, or trust like refers you like you kind of get that fire under your ass to learn it because like sales really isn't that complicated right like if you if you really like went all in for like a couple months you would have pretty much all the information you need right like yeah. if you, you just like all in right like somebody who's like mult like like multiple hours a day they'll they'll study their script like a hundred times like just just somebody who's willing to for a couple months like just go all in like dude that's enough time yeah to get, to get the know-how down like the 80 percent that you know that'll yeah. that'll drive the results or the 20 percent that'll drive the results like yeah dude yeah because um, you only need one person to say yes mm -hmm. and then you need one more person to say yes and then one more person after that so it's like it you know you just have to build that skill though it's not just going to happen because you listen to something or read a book if that were the case there'd be no coaching programs you'd be like read this book and then come work for me you know what I mean? Like there, it, yeah. that's the way it would be. But I think that knowing your skill level and knowing, hey, I'm just coming into this, especially if you're coming to like a recruiter or somebody whose job it is to find these opportunities for people. Like, I don't understand why you would come to a recruiter and they offer you something that's decent. You know, sometimes they can be some pretty, you know, crappy opportunities. But if they offer you something decent, and you're looking for something forever and you turn it down. I don't get why you turn it down. You know what I mean? Like if it works for your time, it works for, you know, your morals and it works for, you know, your ability, then why not do it? Do it for a little they, bit and go find something else. The The thing is they just don't know any better, you know? Yeah. And, and so like, I, I know we're, we're saying like, Hey, like, you know, jump into a smaller offer. It's not a big deal. Like, you know, they're, they're going to give you a lot of support. Um, as long as it's inbound but like i think a challenge there bro is like they they legitimately just know but no don't know better the the perspective um you ever heard that saying no one has a plan like the everybody has a plan so they get like punched in the face something like that yeah that that punch kind of calibrates you and i think that that initial punch is like the having the bad experience right but like some people don't really get calibrated you ever seen somebody who stays in a really shitty offer like 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 literally like 
there's there's the business owner and them <laughs> they haven't made money in like six months or something they just stay in the same offer like do you ever see yeah. that yeah like that that's the one i guess concern i have and, and what, i think what you mentioned about the mentor like kind of covers it right like they'll tell you like dude get the fuck out of there it's been 30 like yeah. get out of there you know but i think without that hindsight it, it's actually very easy to get stuck in an opportunity i think that's what happens i think that's pretty much what happens too yeah that's um, true going at it alone can can get you fucked um that's true. yeah but what, what would you say about mm -hmm. leveraging your skill versus like the fullness of an offer right so say mm -hmm. it's, it's not it's not a t it's not an offer with multiple sales people it's not an offer with you know sales manager or like a big team um they're not pulling in 50 to 80 to you know they're not pulling in big numbers they're making money but they're not pulling in great great numbers but the evidence is there that money can be made if you put your mind to it and put put the work in what would you say like is the margin for saying okay i understand this may not be going well for the people that are there but looking at this offer doing my research I know that I can go and put the effort in and make a difference in this offer. Do you say there's room for that? I, th I think it's a tough position for, so it, it's tough for, it's tough for the rep, right? Yeah. You just think about it for, for the reps, like if they might be in like a very desperate position, mm -hmm. you know, they just invested their life savings into something. They want to make money. And now they, now they see like, oh, this offer has this many sales as opposed to the number they're told that the, the offer is supposed to have. Um, so, it, and and there is a risk whenever an offer isn't at a certain level. Um, and here's the challenge with newer reps as well. They don't know if the offer is going to yield results because they don't know what a result that yields offer looks like because they've never been on an offer, mm -hmm. right? So they just literally don't know. And, and I think that's the challenge with being like a like a newer rep that like you, you don't really have that discernment. Um, I, I think younger as well, because if you're a little bit older, you've been in business for a while, even if you haven't been directly a sales rep, you know what I mean? Business is basically sales and um, you're, you have more of a sense of discernment. So I think for that discernment, I, I think... Um, I would ad like advise somebody who's new to be like careful, but dude, like me having been in the industry for a while and joining offers that are small and making a fuck ton of money and like a small offer, bro, like it, it, it's there and they're real. And I think that sweet spot, yeah. that sweet spot where the company's at like 50 grand a month and they're starting to hire reps. Like, I, I think that's a really like, again, you have to be able to have discernment you know, but if you can get into a good one that's on the way up, like, you, like it, you can you you can grow very quickly, right? Yeah. But it, that that's an alternative to the dream client that everybody has. You know, everybody there is making thirty k a month. Half they suck, so I could do it too, right? Like, mm -hmm. fulfillment's beautiful. I think that's like the the unicorn everybody chases, but, um, you know. It's and that's, that's the thing. It's it's not it's not easy. It's definitely not easy to find these gigs. It's definitely not easy to come into any offer, new or not, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy. But everything is not like you said, that unicorn offer. Mm -hmm. So at some point you've got to figure out, okay, is this worth my energy and time? Can the skill that I have and my work ethic make a difference in this company? If it can. And let me explore if they have the some of the some, if not most of the pieces that I need to, to be successful. If they've got most of the pieces that I need to be successful and they're missing a few here and there, I might consider that offer. You know, if if mm -hmm. they're more most like if most of the pieces are there and just a few things here and there that we can tweak along the way, then oh yeah, that's something that I might consider. Coming into it where I'm like, okay. I know that this is a place where I can make money. This is a place where I can learn. And this is a place where I can actually like, you know, help people or whatever your motivation is. Like I, that's an offer I'd consider. It's it like you said, it takes discernment and it takes effort and it takes 
you know, it takes a lot of energy to find those those offers, which is why you have recruiters and mentors and people to refer you to these things because it's hard. But you've got to make decisions better. Oh, bro, let me add to that. So yeah. like, like what you said about like, so with those offers, right? Like with, with um, if it's a referral from somebody who's where you want to be, right? That's very different from like you searching. I think if you're searching independently, yeah. right? Like the only way you can really be safe and have the highest chance of like success with a client is, is looking for the unicorn and seeing how close they can get to it. Mm. But dude, if somebody who knows, likes and trusts you is connecting you with the opportunity, right? And they say like, yo, this has like the things you want and you're brand new. I think you can, that's something you can trust as well. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think that's something you could trust as well. Yeah. It, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard position to be in. You know, being a new sales rep in this industry and in this market, you know, it's tough, but it's not not doable. Like, right. The thing is like, we saw, we, we lived through the, the influx of high ticket closers, right? Uh -huh. It was just like, you know, we were part of that influx of high ticket closers, everybody coming in, trying to make millions of dollars online, you know, and that's great. That's, that's a great, you know, more power to you. But the work that's required to get there is something that a lot of people didn't understand. Mm -hmm. They fell off. And not even to get there, dude. Right? Because hell yeah, getting there is tough. But like, there. once you have the skill set, how many hours do you think you have to work if you want to make like fucking coin? You know? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know anybody who's made like 100 grand a month that didn't work a fuck ton that month or yeah. those months, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like, what are you willing to sacrifice? It's, it's not easy it's not yeah. easy at all um yeah. fuck dude uh but guys that this was fun i'm actually we're gonna we're gonna call it today um but this is i, I think for like anybody new like i think this was huge because like when you're new you don't really know these things and and if it can help anybody avoid like a pitfall or help advance their development like, fuck yeah you know yeah. we're having a little uh a little impact just like you should impact that like button <laughs> that was so corny <laughs> <laughs> see you guys see you on next week's podcast see you guys peace